Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. In this video, we are going to go over experience. This was a poll that I put out onto the new YouTube community tab, uh, where I asked people what they would like to see for this video, and the winning poll option was experience. So today we're going to create a very simple game involving a chicken and coins, where for each coin the chicken grabs, we will gain some experience, and then based on the amount of experience we've earned, we will level up. All of the assets used in this video, as well as the project file, as well as information on where to find assets, and the links to the assets that were used in this video can be found on the post page for this video over on my Patreon page. So thank you for watching, and let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in some sprites. I'm going to pull in a chicken walking cycle. Um, we're going to name this one here SPR chicken. And I'm going to go ahead and just double click on the chicken object, uh, sorry, the chicken image. Then we'll head over to the image menu and go down to convert to frames. This will let us slice up a sprite sheet like this into a series of sequenced images that can be animated. So there are 12 frames I think in this and there are four frames per row and those are 32 by 32 sorry there's not 12 there are 16 that's terrible math um, so as you can see here these have all been sliced up into their individual frames now and if we hit convert it'll say do you want to replace the images we're gonna say yes and you'll see that we now have a sequence of chickens if we press play it will animate through each of the frames now for this example we're not going to be dealing with a very complicated input system so I'm going to delete all of the frames except for the chicken that is facing the downwards direction so we'll have a seamless looping chicken in a walking cycle the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the offset for this to be the middle center sorry the middle center um, and what that's going to do is oh, let me just zoom in on that what that's going to do is place the center point of the chicken in the middle so that when we place this on our maps, that when we're dealing with inputs, um, everything is happening from the center of the sprite. So we can cross this one off now. I'm going to bring in some coin sprites. We're going to do a very similar thing here where we go to edit the image, then we select the image menu and go down to convert to frames. Then from here, this is only one row of frames, so we're just going to increase this number here up to... Sorry, not number of frames let's just increase this up to eight because there's eight frames in this image yep they are 32 by 32 sized sprites and we'll hit convert we'll say yes again and now we'll get the animating coins so you can see those bouncing up and down now so now we have a coin sprite and a chicken sprite i'm just going to rename this one here spr coin so those are the basis sorry that is the basis for our images in this example i'm going to go ahead now and edit our first room so this is rm0 i'm going to name this here to rm level one then i'll double click on that to open it up in the room editor and i'm going to change it just to a smaller room like 640 by 480 so we don't have to deal with such a large room the other thing i'll do is i'll change the background color so if you just come over to the top left select the backgrounds layer change the color i'm going to select a nice green shade a very not a not an offensive green but a sort of light but light green, sort of RPG green. There we go. I'll go ahead with that green now. So that's going to be the place for our chickens and our queens to, to roam and to move around on. The next thing I'm going to do is create an object. This object is going to be the controller for our game. Our game is very simple in concept. It's really just designed to demonstrate how experience works specifically. So this controller, its job is going to be to create coins on the map. So I'm going to call this obj underscore controller. Oops, if I can spell that correctly. There we go, and I'm gonna give it no sprite. What that means is when it's in the room, it will be completely invisible, but it will still be able to run code. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a create event by selecting add event, create. Then I will move over to the code window here, and I'm just gonna say alarm zero equals one. And what this means is the alarms are basically counters. If you stick a number in an alarm, every frame the alarms will go down by one counter. So this means in one frame, this alarm will fire its event. Now if I put 60 here, that means in 60 frames, this alarm will go and fire its event. Now, assuming your game is running at 60 frames per second, that means that this alarm will fire in one second. But I want this frame, I want this alarm to fire immediately, so I'm going to put one. Then what I'm going to do is select add event. I'm going to go down to alarm and put alarm zero. 
and then I'm just going to get rid of the example, sorry, the, the description text up here. And now in the alarm, what I want to do is I want to create a coin on the map somewhere. So I'm going to say, uh, let's do this with instance create. We'll say instance create, which is a function which allows us to create an instance of an object at a specific at any specific point on the map. Now we don't have an object for a coin yet, but that's fine. We'll add one of those in a moment. I'm going to choose instance create depth. This takes four parameters. This is the X position, the Y position, the depth of the object within its layer, and then the object in question that we're trying to create. So we can go ahead and say destination X is going to be equal to random. And we want it to be a random number between zero and the width of the room. So let's say room width. Yeah, right, we'll say destination, sorry, destination Y is going to be equal to random room height. So this will give us a random position anywhere within our room. The layer will just put it zero because we're not dealing with depth sorting at the moment. So we'll just say destination X, destination Y, layer or depth zero, sorry, depth zero, not layer zero. And the object that we're going to create, we haven't created it yet, but let's just put it in here, OBJ coin. Now that, that will have an error because the object doesn't exist yet, but um, actually it doesn't have an error, that's weird. Um, that's fine, it, it will pick that up once we create that object anyway. So let's go ahead and create our coin object by selecting the objects uh, menu in our resources panel, right click and select create object. And I'm going to call this one OBJ underscore coin. Now this time I'm going to give the coin a sprite. It's going to be the coin sprite that we created earlier. This is also going to get a solid uh, collision. Uh, so over here under collision mask where it says visible, we're going to check the solid box. What that means is that this object will fire a collision event when it comes in contact with another object, which is testing for collisions with this object. So now that we know that the coin is solid, we can essentially leave it like that for now. So go over to the room RM level one, and we're going to select our instances layer, and then I'm gonna drag the controller object onto our room. So what this means is that if we go back to our controller, the alarm will fire in one frame and it will create one coin on the map. So let's just test that, that works. So as you can see, one coin was created on our map. Um, we haven't got any more coins because we need to set that alarm to fire again. So this time what we'll do is we'll say alarm zero, equals and we'll say we'll give it a minimum of five frames which means that there is some delay but we'll also add a random uh, a random number between 0 and 30 so this so 30 means remember that this is frames so at 60 frames per second 30 frames is half a second so this is anywhere roughly from immediately to half a second later and let's have a look how that looks so basically let's go over this logic again one more time it creates the uh, it creates the object controller, it sets the alarm, the alarm will fire in one frame, which creates a coin on the map, and then any time up to half a second later, the alarm will fire again, which creates another coin somewhere on the map, then any time up to half a second later, it creates another coin, and so on and so forth. So let's run our game and have a look and see if that works. So now you should see that we're getting coins spawned on our room anywhere up to half a second later. Now. Let's go ahead and add our chicken to the map. Uh, sorry, let's create our chicken object. So I'll create a new object. I'm gonna call this one object chicken. And I'm gonna give it the sprite of a chicken. Uh, this object doesn't need to be solid because we're not dealing with any sort of advanced collisions here. So I'm just gonna add a new event. It's going to be a collision event with the coin. So when the chicken collides with the coin, we are going to destroy the coin. We're going to get rid of it. So we'll say instance, sorry, say with other. So that basically means with other. So other is the thing that we're colliding with. So with the other, which is the coin that we're colliding with, we are going to go instance, let's spell that right, destroy. What that means is that when we collide with a coin, with other, because right now self is chicken. So the other has to be the coin that we collided with destroy the other thing. So now we've set up a basic collision system which will destroy the coin once we collide with it. The other thing that we're going to do here is I'm going to leave a comment. We need to gain some experience. But we haven't set up an experience system yet. And that brings us to the main point of this video. 
How do we deal with experience in a game? How do we deal with leveling up? How do we deal with gaining experience when some condition happens? And with that experience, what do we do when we level up? So can we increase the speed of coin spawning, decrease the uh, speed of coin spawning, increase enemy spawning rates? You know, we need some sort of event to hook into that with. So now we have our chicken. I'm going to add a create event. In our create event, I'm going to call this C level, which stands for chicken level. It's going to be one. I'm going to create a variable called CEXP, which stands for chicken experience. It's going to be set as zero. And then we need one called C, which is chicken EXP to level. So this is the amount of experience required to reach the next level. And I'm going to set this as uh, 60. Actually, let's, yeah, let's do 60 and we'll do that multiplied by C level. So it is going to be 60 because C level is one. But what we're saying here is that for every level you reach, the amount of experience required to make it to the next level will increase again. So for our first level here, it's going to be 60. Once we reach level two, the experience required to level is going to be 60 multiplied by two because we're now level two. So it'll be 120 and so on and so forth as we reach three, four, five, the amount of experience to level will scale up with our existing level. So now that we have these variables, let's go ahead and say that once we collide with the coin, we're going to gain some experience. So let's go in here and say that CEXP is going to be plus equal to 10. So we're going to add 10 experience to our CEXP variable. Then we're going to say if CEXP, so if our current experience is greater than C EXP to level, the amount of experience required to level up, then we're going to increase our chickens level. So C level plus equals one. So we're going to increase the level. Then what we'll do is we'll set C EXP to zero because we've used the experience. We, we've gone over the amount of experience required to level up to the next level. Therefore, the experience bar has to go back down to zero. And the final thing we'll do is we'll repeat that little calculation that we did in the create event to reset what our required experience to level is going to be. So this, in this case, once we level to level two, the experience bar is emptied, and then the amount of experience required to reach the next level is doubled because we'll be level two, or tripled because we'll be level three, or quadrupled because we'll be level four. So that's the basis of our experience system right there. Let's go ahead and add one more thing to our chicken, and that is gonna be a very simple mechanism to move with. I'm going to add a step event. In the step event, I'm going to say if, uh, let's use the mouse events. So we'll use mouse check, uh, which one will we use? We'll use mouse check button, and that's going to be MB left. So if you're pressing the left button, then we are going to move the chicken towards the mouse pointer. And we're going to use a very simple function for this. It's just going to lurk from its position to the mouse position. So we'll look from the X position of the chicken currently to the mouse position. And the third parameter is how fast. So we'll use 0.1 speed for that. Do the same thing for the Y variable. So we'll just say that Y is equal to lurping from Y. Well, that's T, that's not Y. Uh, from Y to mouse Y at a speed of 0.1. So lerp, if you don't know, is just linear interpolate. This is not a... Uh, a very good input system for a game. This is just a way for me to show you how this game is working. Um, so I wouldn't really go ahead and use this in any game unless you want your input to look like what's about to be shown on screen. Uh, but that's a very simple way of just testing things. If you need to move something around in your game, you can lerp between the current position and the mouse's position when the left button is pressed. So let's go ahead and run our game and have a look and see if the experience system is working, which we won't be able to see because there's no way of seeing it on the screen. But let's see if our chicken's moving. Ah, okay, so now that we have a very simple input system, let's go ahead and add our chicken to our game. So head down to the rooms, make sure that the instances layer is selected, and then drag a chicken somewhere in the middle of the game window. So I'm gonna put the chicken right there in the middle. Now, if we go ahead and run our game, we should be able to, assuming that all the code has worked correctly, move our chicken around with the mouse, which we can. The chicken will now follow the mouse if I click, or if I click and drag, the chicken will sort of follow the mouse. And you can see the coins are popping up on the screen now. If we collide with the coins, you'll see the coins are being eaten by the chicken. 
and in the background we are gaining experience and leveling up but we have no way to see what our level is right now we have no way to see what our experience requirements are we have no way of really visualizing any of that so let's go ahead and add a really simple display we're just going to use the draw text functions to display the amount of experience the chicken currently has and what the chicken's level currently is on the screen so heading back into our object chicken, we can then go ahead and add an event. I'm going to add a draw GUI. So draw GUI, basically graphical user interface. This is the area where you can draw things on the screen that are not necessarily um, relevant, sorry, not relevant. The word I'm looking for is uh, tied to the character's position. So if you used just draw function and then you put some positions in there as the chicken moved around, the thing that you're drawing will move around with response to the chicken but if you use draw GUI we're talking about coordinates in relation to the space to screen space rather than to the entire room since a room could be bigger than the screen so we're using draw GUI for this I'm just going to use a very simple function called draw text we are going to draw at positions 10 10 this is just a 10 X 10 Y from the top left corner of the screen and we'll draw some simple text saying level and then what we'll do is because we need to display what the chicken's level is, we will say string because we need to convert a number into a piece of text so that we can use it with this draw text function. And the string that we're going to put is C level, which is the chicken's level. Now we can go ahead and repeat this function down here and we'll change the Y value from 10 to 25. That way it's the same X pixels across so it's the same margin on the left but this new piece of text is going to appear a little bit further down, a little bit more below the top line here. And we're going to change this to say EXP. The first value is going to be CEXP. Then we're going to add another piece of text using the plus for concatenate. This will concatenate strings. Concatenate basically means to attach two pieces of text together or to attach two things together. So we're going to attach this string with the actual experience the chicken has plus a forward slash, then we're going to add another string and that is going to be CEXP to level, the amount of experience level. So when we run this, we should see something like level 10 EXP, we'll see five out of you know 1200. That will be our experience bar and how we visualize that. So let's go ahead and run our game and see if everything's working. So as you can see, we now have level one experience zero out of 60. If I collect a coin, you'll see our experience is now 10 out of 60. Let's go ahead and collect six coins. Now, six coins, 60 out of 60. We need to go over that number. So let's go one more and you'll see we've reached level two. So we reached level two. Let's go ahead and continue collecting coins. You'll see this time we need 12 coins in order to level up. Well, actually we need 13 because we need to go over. But as you can see, our chicken is now running around collecting coins like a mad chook. Look at those chicken coin collecting skills there. See, we've reached level four. And you now have a way of determining the player's level and gaining experience. Now, this doesn't have to be chickens. This is a really simple example. You know, you could be gaining experience when you shoot a soldier or when you, when you defeat an enemy or when you pick some item up off the floor. You know, all of these different conditions are ways that you can just increase that EXP value. It doesn't have to be CEXP either. That's just what I've called it since it's a chicken. Um, but you increase that value, you have a calculation when you increase the experience to determine um, what, what amount of experience you're getting, and then you are able to calculate the player's level based off the amount of experience acquired. So now you can see we're at 360, it's taking more and more coins in order to level up as we go higher in these levels. So that's a really basic experience system. The next thing that you guys can do, and I'm going to start you on this, and this is going to be a little bit of homework something new that i'm introducing to the channel is a uh, a very simple expansion idea i'm going to give you a something to do and i'm going to give you the project to do it in so that you guys can go ahead and expand upon this and learn a little bit more so the thing i want you guys to add is the ability for these coins to determine how much experience the chicken is going to get and i'm going to start you off with that really simply just by going into our coin object going into the create event I'm going to add a comment in here saying define the amount of experience well I spelled that wrong to give and we're just going to call this um, C well, actually, I actually call it that we'll call it coin exp equals um, we'll say 10 then I'm going to go into our chicken and I'm going to say with our 
object coin function in this, uh, sorry, our, our collision with object coin, where we add 10 experience here, I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it up here. And this time I'm going to change this from with other CEXP to object chicken .exp. Remembering that with other, we are now talking about the coin object. So anything that happens within these brackets is happening in the context of the coin. Now the coin doesn't have a CEXP variable, the chicken does. So object chicken dot CEXP plus equals, and I want you guys to change this from plus equals 10 to plus equals coin EXP. The next thing that you can do is go ahead and randomize this. Randomize this value. And that way, when the coin is created, the amount of experience that is given will change. And that's the homework for this video. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this really basic experience system. This was the video that was voted for by the viewers of this channel um, on the new YouTube, I think it's called the new YouTube community tab where I created the poll for this video. Moving forward, there will be more polls like this happening over on the Patreon page. So if you do consider going and donating to the channel over there, you will get some control over what the next video is going to be when they're coming out and access to all of the files that are used in the video, including the project files, including project notes and access to uh, the links to where I get the resources that I use in these videos from. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave a thumbs up and share it with any game developers you know on Twitter, Facebook, anywhere you want to share the video. Take care for now and I'll see you guys in the next video.